a ministerial director and personal ministry director in Zimbabwe Union. Pastor Chiringa, we welcome you and we are praying that the Lord will use you as his vessel today to speak to us. Please unmute. This is your time, Pastor, to speak to us from heaven. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone. Uh, may my co-host uh, respond if you are hearing me. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, yes, greetings to everyone at a very special time and appointment in life and in history of our salvation. The only moment that matters before God is no other time but the time of prayer. More so when the appointment has proceeded all other activities of the day. And therefore, it is my joy to be part of this grand group who have seen the world and have been convinced that there is nothing in this world that matters at this time more than prayer. And therefore, thank you so much. I want to invite everyone to the Gospels and not only to the Gospels, but to the Gospel of Mark. You remember that Mark is very interested in inviting people to see what Christ can do. And therefore, I invite you to the book of Mark. And this time, let's come to chapter 5. When you come to chapter 5 of the book of Mark, you are not only coming to a chapter, but you are coming to a region, to an area, to a territory um, that was spiritually dark. An area that belonged to someone else, whom we'll speak later. Uh, I, I don't mean a dot in the world, I mean a region. You notice that uh, in this chapter, you are invited to a region of not less than 10 cities, a very big area, almost a province. And there I invite you. I know it's a bit scary to be invited to a place that everyone knows this place is hounded, that this region is dangerous spiritually, but doesn't matter, still I invite you to this region where expect to meet anything that is spiritually dangerous. I may not be sure these days in which we are living, global villages, it were, yes, everyone coming from here and there. I may not be sure uh, if I can answer a question, which place is spiritually uh, safe? Which place is spiritually clean? I may not be sure uh, these days, but in those days it was known that this area is a spiritually hounded area. But I also know that even these days, uh, we may not point to a city or a province or a district where we can say, yep, yeah, this place is hounded, but we can still point to some families. Some families, some homes, some houses that are spiritually hounded. And it's not only me who is inviting you there, you will notice that, uh, let's read chapter five of the book of Mark. This one says, they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tomb to meet him. Hmm, what a meeting. This man lived in the tombs 
and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. And I don't mean plastic chain, um, for he had often be chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus was saying to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion. He replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Many things to talk about, but uh, just a few things that I want to share with the saints uh, uh, this morning. Uh, maybe uh, two or <coughs> two or three realities that I need to share with you. One reality that is clear here is uh, this region was hounded with many demons, many. And if one man can possess so many, I wonder what it was about the whole region. And I know you know that word legion might mean 2,000 to 6,000 demons all housed in one person. Uh, that, that might mean, that might tell uh, the, 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 the desperation of demons in this place to look for somewhere to house themselves, to stay, to dwell. That, that might tell uh, if, if so many uh, to, to, to force themselves in one person. Um, uh, it tells you then th there was a serious desperation in this region for demons to find somewhere where they can house themselves. That's a reality. Another reality is uh, we are told that uh, this man uh, was now living in the tombs um, uh, somewhere in the cemeteries, somewhere there. That is where he was staying. And of course, cemeteries were not pla uh, placed somewhere within the community of people. They would put the cemeteries somewhere outside in some bundu there. That's where they would bury their relatives there. And um, we are told that uh, this man, that is where he was staying. And um, I, 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 I see uh, a, a challenge here to say that this was his home. Um, he is a man uh, uh, who could speak as you heard. He was speaking to Jesus. And, um, and I wonder, uh, how can someone be said to be homed in a jungle, in a bundu? How does that operate? Uh, I'm very sure this man had a father and a mother, possibly siblings. He, 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 there was somewhere where he was born, somewhere where he was bred somewhere where he grew up, uh, uh, some mother who sucked him, I, I think somewhere, somewhere, uh, 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 but now he is no longer there. He is there in the tombs, in the cemetery, uh, where there is no shelter, uh, the trees and, 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 and the, the uh, uh, insects and the, the reptiles and the, the snakes and the, the, uh, the rocks and the stones and other animals there where his friends, his community, and his environment. Uh, uh, but uh, the reality is this. This man had parents. That is the reality. And if that is the reality, my brothers and my sisters, then uh, the question is, what sin did this man commit that uh, all these demons were allowed to house themselves in, in him 
and uh, that even the whole community, as we had, tried to save him by chaining him and uh, and and tying him, most most possibly to some big tree there at home, and uh, feed him staying there day and night until they 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 they, they failed and he broke everything and went away and stayed there. Um, I, 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 I my my challenge, my dear brothers and sisters, is that where. Uh, where were his parents? They must have been somewhere. Even his parents lost hope. They could not do anything but to leave him alone. He was a danger to them. He was a danger to the community. He was a danger to everyone, even to himself. Until the demons decided, let's go where we are free in the tombs. And they, I, I know in an African culture to be to be to have demons in the cemeteries, in tombs, uh, in, uh, somewhere where graves are, uh, it's, it's not good news. You not want to have your road or your pathway somewhere by that side. Uh, you know what will meet you there. But my point is, this man had parents. That is my point. And uh, these parents who, who had done all what parents need to do to their son, had to leave him to go. And uh, may I therefore say, Psalm 127 verse 1 says, if the Lord do not build a house, they build in vain who build it. If the Lord do not keep a city, they keep in vain who guard it. And if I can now extend this verse right where you are seated and uh, where you are as we uh, come into the place of prayer, may I say to you, if the Lord will not visit your home, if the Lord will not be somewhere in you, if the Lord is not invited in your life, don't think you are smarter than this man legion. Don't think you are holier than this man legion. Don't think you are righteous than this man legion. Um, be aware that um, uh, uh, those demons did not die when Legion finally died, they are still alive. They are still somewhere. Uh, they, 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 they know this world. They've been there. You can count the years, 2,000 years, uh, until today, just to name those ones. And uh, they can still find you unless the Lord guard a city. The reality, the second reality is this. Uh, you are not as safe as this man was not safe. That is the second reality. The third reality that I want to uh, uh, pick from this passage, the third reality, my brothers and sisters, is that uh, uh, there's someone, there's someone who, who sees, there's someone who is able, there's someone who cares. Yes, uh, there's someone indeed. And uh, this someone, without checking from his disciples, without visiting the villagers to say, I know you have a problem in this area. I've come to sort it without, you know, uh, uh, trying to visit even the family, uh, you know, you know, without that, he just decided, let me visit this place. And uh, the book of John chapter two, verse number 25 says, no one told Christ about anyone, for he knew about all people before he was told. So I can confidently say, Christ knew about this man way before, years before, uh, even in eternity past. He knew there's someone who was going to be born in this area, who was going to be hounded uh, in this area, whose parents were going to lose hope. Uh, whose relatives were going to lose hope, whose siblings were going to lose hope, whose uh, 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 friends were going to lose hope. Someone, who, 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 whether classmate or a schoolmate or a, a village met, were going to lose hope until they leave him, until they avoided him, until they, 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 they shunned him, until they shut him out, until they begged him to go away from them, uh, Jesus knew of this person. And there is a reality in this passage 
that is clear from the way Jesus visited this place. He did not visit to kind of check, to kind of test uh, whether he was able to. No, he visited intentionally. He visited uh, uh, resourcefully. And when I saw re say resourcefully, I mean powerfully. I mean with a presence. I mean with a provision. I mean with a purpose. He visited intentionally uh, uh, to, to, to unveil himself, not only to this man, but to unveil himself even to the demons which were haunting this whole province. He visited to unveil not only to the demons, he visited to the whole village, to the whole region, to all the people. Uh, he and visited not only to unveil to these, but even to the creatures that were suffering the presence of these de demons. He unveiled himself, uh, not only to these, but to the whole universe, even to me and to you. And the Christ chose this place. The other fascinating uh, 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 part of this visit, my dear brothers and sisters, is that uh, Christ uh, uh, he was never invited here. He knew where he was going. He knew the extent, he knew the level uh, 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 of the danger of which uh, was haunting this place. He knew and uh, he, he placed himself where he belonged when you compare uh, himself and those who had tried to assist this man, I am sure, uh, his parents had paid all what tax to those who are, are would say we can assist you uh, exorcise those demons. I, I know they paid anything, but it went drained down, but for a loss. And the Jesus, when he came to this place, he knew uh, his foe, he knew his enemy. He placed himself at a trajectory that when the demons saw him, at a distance. And uh, when the Bible says at a distance, it's not saying two meters. No, 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 no. It's not saying two meters. It's not saying 200 meters. No, it may be even 20 kilometers away. The demons saw Christ entering the region, entering the province. Just speak of Polokwane, just speak of Limpopo, just speak of Kauteng, just speak of a region. Of, of a province, and uh, someone is entering that province, uh, 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 and uh, some, some 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 people had housed themselves there. Some people had given themselves the ranks, uh, offices. Uh, uh, Paul speaks of ranks of dignitaries. Paul speaks of uh, 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 powers. Uh, uh, th they were ruling and reigning in the whole province, and. Uh, they see someone entering their watchmen, the, the, those watchmen who would tell these powers that someone has visited us, someone has come here. I remember one day when I was preaching somewhere and uh, the demon just uh, made some noise and began to say, I know who you are uh, and uh, that you are so and so and you've come. He, he knew me uh, and I was in another province he knew me from my home, another province. And uh, here uh, uh, are demons. They saw Christ not two meters away. They saw him kilometers away. And uh, they ran, you know, uh, uh, they ran. That, that's the word used here. Uh, uh, of course, we, we are uh, 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 personifying a human being, Legion himself, this man who is using his feet. In other words, he was in serious tr trouble when those demons were running to Christ. Uh, uh, and that, that, that figure, that picture, that paint of demons uh, running to Christ tells you a level at which Christ had placed himself when he had visited this place. My brothers and my sisters, for today, let me uh, 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 stop here and say, may I invite you, may I invite you uh, uh, to invite Christ? Um, yes, may I invite you to invite Christ. May I say to you, uh, there were many people possessed with the demons. Christ passed by them. 
uh, and why? Because they were able to speak and invite Christ and they never did that. So he left them like that. But this man was no longer able. He knew nothing. His mind was possessed. The demons were in total control. He could not help himself. That is why Christ visited this man. And, uh, and uh, you, we have them in our cities. Those whom we know, they are beyond their minds. They no longer know home. Uh, where they are born, where they were bred, they no longer know. They are, uh, let me be uh, painful and say, they're completely useless. Useless, even to the, themselves. And uh, the demons have taken over. And the Christ visited this one. You are yet at a trajectory. You are yet at a level where you can invite Christ. I think you can see uh, what Christ can do. I don't need to read the passage again. I don't need to repeat it. You can see what Christ is able to do. May I therefore today say, uh, these are the realities that are surrounding you. But the last reality is that there's someone, not only who cares, but who is powerful and who is intentional in serving those who are not able to save themselves. Who is beyond, uh, uh, in terms of ability, he is beyond the imagination of man. Uh, may God add a blessing to the reading of his word. When you spend your day today and this week, possibly this month, may you be surrounded by the presence of Christ, by the power of Christ. Yes, by the provisions, the, 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 the divine resources of Christ. And uh, may his purpose in you be your salvation and your redemption from all powers of evil. In Jesus' name, we pray. May I add a uh, word in prayer when before we go to our rooms of prayer our kind and loving father you visited the region of gerazim may we ask you to visit this region this family this mother or a brother or a sister this morning in a special way and do what all men are not able to do in terms of our salvation and our redemption. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.